Okay, this is our um, big int class, and we didn't get a whole lot of it uh, written in today's class, so I'm going to finish it here. Uh, first of all, we have some constructors, and uh, we have the default constructor, which has no arguments passed in. And what we do is we go through every element in the array, and by the way, I'm allocating the memory up here, so I only have to do it once. Uh, I set every digit equal to zero, and um, I can also pass in a long. If I pass in a long, then what I have to do is pick off each digit one at a time. And uh, now I declared this to be an int, and if I don't declare that to be an int, and I just do this, um, and is a long, and even though when you mod it by 10, you only get a one digit number, the compiler is not smart enough to know that. And so it gives me an error message here. And uh, now, uh, you probably wouldn't put these parentheses in here the first time that you did it. So I'm going to remove those parentheses. So you might be tempted to fix this by just going like this and uh, dividing it by 10. And that will work uh, up to a point. But this is going to take the integer value of this and then mod it by 10. Uh, what we want is we want to take uh, the mod 10 value and convert it into an integer. So you need parentheses around the whole thing. Now, you will. this is a bug that could go a long time before you would find it. But if you declare uh, a value, of, if you pass in a value of n here that is bigger than uh, the maximum value of an integer, uh, you know, which would be, say, you pass in a 15-digit number, well, then it's going to convert that into an integer first, which will convert it from a 15 uh, digit number into a, a 10 digit number and then it will mod that by 10 and you will not get the right results so you want to take the integer value of the whole thing and if you're ever in doubt about precedence rules you can either look them up or just put your own parentheses in to make sure that things get done in the correct order and uh, I'm not sure what this okay it's gone now uh, then I take that remainder and I put it in uh, the current position and I am putting my low order bit in the low numbered index. So uh, the, the ones column is going to go in location 0 in my array, the tens column is going to go in location 1 and so on. Uh, and then I take in and divide it by 10 and I do that for all 40 digits. Now eventually um, the biggest long I could possibly have would be 20 digits long. So I get through this loop 20 times and then from that point on when I divide by 10 eventually I'm going to get 0 and I'll just keep getting 0 and 0 and 0 and 0 here and so I still will um, you know, end up with zeros for the uh, high order digits. Okay. And the last thing that we just barely had time for in class was um, a constructor that will take a string. And um, what I do here is first I put all zeros in. Uh, there's probably a way to combine this with this loop, but uh, it's probably a little simpler this way. Um, and what I do then is I want to start with the ones column. Well, if I have a string like uh, the string one, two, three. Uh, the 1 is in location 0, the 2 is in location 1, and the 3 is in location 2. So I want to start with the 3, which is going to be the length at uh, minus 1. And as long as j is greater than or equal to 0, um, I want to keep on, that means I've still got locations left in my string and I want, to, I want to decrement. So I'm working from the right edge of the string all the way to the left edge. Okay. Um, now, in my array, I'm starting at location 0 and working my way up. So every time through the loop, uh, i is my uh, array index, j is my string index, and uh, j gate needs to get decremented every time, and i needs to get incremented every time. And um, there's two ways to do this. You can you can take a substring at j from j to j plus one, and in uh, Java, uh, it goes up to but not including this. So if you want to get one character, you just give the index of that character, and then the index of that character plus one. Um, this will return a string. If it returns a string, then I have to use integer.parse int uh, to convert it. Uh, on the other hand, here's an alternative way that I could have done the same thing. I could have said digits equals, and I could have taken the character value. So I could have done s.care at and position j. Okay. Now, if I do that, um, by the way, you don't get a syntax error here. If, if I took integer.parse out up here, I would get a syntax error saying I'm trying to put a string into an integer. Uh, here I'm trying to put a character into an integer, but 
most uh, languages in the C family allow you to do that. They basically treat a character uh, as an integer when it's uh, convenient to do so. So this will work, but what's going to go in there is not the um, a value from 0 to 9. What's going to go in there is the ASCII code value for whatever that character is. And so what I need to do here is I need to subtract the character value for uh, or the ASCII value for the character 0. So if it's, and I happen to know what the numbers are, 0 is 48. So if the character there is a 0, well 0 my, is my 0 is 48 minus 48 is 0, so I'll put the number 0 in there. Uh, 1 is the number 49. So if it's a 1, I'll take 49 minus the code for 0, which is 48, which is 1. I'll get a 1, and the same is true for all the other ones. So uh, either one of these methods work. Uh, I don't need to do both of them, so I'll just comment one of them out. And uh, we should also, uh, we wrote a two string this morning. And basically all we do is we go through every location in the array and we append it on to the left of the string that we're building. And then we return it. Okay. Now if I go back here and go look at big int test, um, now I've got uh, a few other things in here that we don't really want to have because I uh, haven't actually written the code for those yet. I've written the test code but not the code. Uh, and we also haven't done this one. We'll come back and do that. So uh, I'm going to create a big int uh, using the default constructor and print it out. I should get a zero. I'm going to create one using uh, the long, a long integer, and I should print out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. And the string is just uh, counting backwards down from 9. And that should give me a, a big int. And print string should print those out for me. So I'm sorry, two string should return those strings, and then print line will print them out for me. So let's run the program. And there we go. We get zeros. Um, I think that's yeah. I should have uh, deleted this. Uh, that was just a little test code I had in there from something else I was working on a little while ago. And first time I used the default constructor, and that's what I get. Uh, the second time I use the um, long and yeah, I get one two three four five six seven nine zero and the second time I am missing something here so uh, something and I just remembered what was right you see what's happening I'm getting every other digit uh, the eight and uh, the zero and the and the eight and the six and the four and the two um, and I'm pretty sure I know what happened I uh, need to take a look at uh, this one. Uh, I'm doing J minus minus twice. Um, if I'm doing it up here in the for loop, I certainly don't need to do it down here in the body of the for loop uh, as well. So let's delete that. Now let's run it and see what we get this time and see if our results are a little bit better. Okay, so now it's 9876543210. That is the number um, and everything appears to be working fine. Now. Uh, this particular class happens to be uh, a good place for including uh, a static. Now we've got a static constant here. Uh, that's not really a big deal. Static means there's one copy for the whole class rather than one for each object that gets created in the class. Now, um, <clears throat> when I print out those numbers, if I go if I go to the output, you know, I get 40 digits no matter what. I get all these leading zeros. So uh, this might be a good place to create a public static and we can make this uh, public um, because there's no, we don't really need to worry about any making any invalid changes to this. That's going to be a boolean and uh, the name of it's going to be um, print no, let's not say print let's say show show leading zeros and we're going to set equal to false at the beginning uh, which is probably not the best default, but that's the way that our program is working right now. Uh, whoops, I should set equal to true. True is probably not the best default value. So it will show leading zeros. Um, now, what this is, there'll be one copy of this for the entire class. So um, if I want to print them without leading zeros, I just set this value um, to false for a while and then print my stuff out and then if I want to turn it back on again I just change it and continue working but there's only one copy it's not per um, per object which would be kind of a pain if I had a hundred objects and I wanted to print them all out without uh, leading zeros 
I'd have to set that to false 100 times, okay? So, uh, where this comes into play is uh, when you're converting it into a string. Do you want to include those zeros uh, when, that you return? So, here we need to have an if statement that checks to see if show leading zeros uh, is false, then just do what we, uh, I'm sure if it's true, keep getting this backwards. If it's true, then we want to keep on doing what we've been doing, which is show leading zeros, okay? But if show leading zeros is false, then I don't want to show them, okay? So how do you avoid showing the leading zeros? Well, you need to start at start constructing your string on the left. And as long as you keep finding zeros, uh, don't do anything. Just, uh, just bypass them and don't start constructing your string until you get to your first non-zero digit starting from the left end. So let's try writing that. Let's, uh, it's obviously going to be more than one command, so let's put some curly brackets in here. Um, we didn't need the curly brackets up here because the four is considered one statement, but uh, it's probably not a bad idea to put them in. Okay. So now, what do I want to do if, I, wanna, if uh, I do not want leading zeros to be shown and uh, let's do control Z here something got messed up when I was doing this um, let's try that again and there we go okay so now what I want to do is I want to start at the left okay which would be location 39 or max digits minus one so let's do an integer variable I equals max digits minus one okay and then um, we're just gonna work our way down and you can uh, either do a while loop here or you can do a for loop um, you can argue that a while is more appropriate but I think a four is easier to write here so uh, here's what I'm gonna do for I uh, actually I can combine this stuff up here Start at max digits minus one, uh, as long as i is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, that's the last item in my array. That's the ones column in my array. Uh, do i minus minus, okay? And here's what I want to do. I want to keep going until I find something that's not zero. And um, to find something that's not zero, just do if uh, digits. is not equal to zero then break out of the loop I'll get it maybe I won't okay um, now when I break out um, I will be pointing at the first non-zero value however uh, the scope of I is just the body of this loop here so if I want this to work I'm gonna have to give I a larger scope so I'm gonna clear it up here and then I don't need to declare it inside of any of my for loops here. It's already been declared. Okay, so um, so let's say that I I do there's three zeros on the front, and then uh, it's a B39, 38, and 37. Then I finally get to location uh, 36, and it's not a zero. So I break and I quit the loop. Okay, so now I'm sitting on 36. That is where I want to start building my string. Okay, so now uh, I need another loop to finish off what I haven't, uh, the digits that I haven't looked at so far. So I'm going to uh, do an integer variable j equals i is where I'm going to start, semicolon, uh, j is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, no, i is greater than or equal to zero. And um, I don't need J. And I don't need to initialize I here, so I can just uh, leave that like that and 
that's a perfectly legal as long as I put semicolon in there. So I stay in here as long as i is greater than or equal to zero and subtract one from i every time I go through the loop. And what do I want to do in here? Well, I want to take my string and I want to append on the left of it uh, the current digit. Okay. And then I want to return s uh, when I'm done. So uh, I will go through here the last time when i is 0, and then I'll drop out, and I'll return s. So um, let's give this a try now. Uh, let's say set show leading zeros equal to false. And let's go back to this, and let's uh, make sure that's our main program, and let's run it. And the numbers I get should be, I still forgot to take this out. Um, ooh. I'm getting one zero on the on this side, and I'm missing. I think this number was nine eight seven six five four three two one zero, and this is one two three four five six seven eight nine zero. I'm missing a digit on the end here, so uh, we're going to have to go back and try and figure out what happened to that. Uh, and let me get rid of that sixty five that's getting printed out here at the beginning all the time too. Um, now let's go back to uh, big int and uh, let's see what uh, the problem is here. So I'm starting at 39 and I keep working my way down and uh, if digit sub i is not equal to 0, that means I hit my first non-zero and then what I want to do is wa I want to take that value and I want to append it onto s. Okay, um, I could put a breakpoint in there, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to print out the value of i. And uh, I'm going to print out the value of my string. Okay, so now let's run the program and see what we get here. Um, it's going to get a lot of output. Now, uh, my string was 9876543210. And so when i is 9, uh, that would be the tenth digit from the end. So I get a 1, or I'm sorry, I, I get uh, a 1. And then I get, what's my first number here? Let's go back and look at the big int test. And uh, so I'm getting a 1, and I am um, doing the whole thing backwards. Um, I want the digit appended on the right. So uh, I got this turned around. Put my plus in there. Okay. And I don't think I'm going to need these again because I'm pretty sure I've got it fixed now. But let's go ahead and run the program and see what we get. Okay. My, uh, let's go to big int test and then let's go back and pull up the output window here. And uh, the, okay, now the zero is not working. I've got a problem with that. I'll have to go fix that. That's going to be a special case. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. That's what I'm getting. And then I want to print out seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And that's what I'm getting. So uh, now we're working for everything except uh, the number zero. Okay. So uh, what we need to do down here, I think, is if we've done all this stuff and if uh, S is still, come on. If s equals the empty string, then set equal to the string 0. And then we can return s. So now we should get a 0 on that first one. And we do. And so that takes care of uh, fixing up two string and using, it's a good example, 
of um, how you can use a static uh, variable here that is has one copy for the entire class. Now, let's go back over here and look at how to use it. Uh, so um, now I've got I was playing with another one here, but let's uh, the way you use it is like this. Uh, use the name of the class dot and now max digits cannot be changed because it's a constant. Now this uh, I made public instead of private, um, but I don't really have a problem with that because uh, there's only two values you can take on. And so you you know I could have like a get and a set for it, but I think that's that would just be overkill. So I'm gonna set show leading zeros equal to true, and uh, then I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna copy all of this code here and paste it in, and I'm going to. Oh, I can't uh, redeclare them, so uh, don't declare them. Just give them new, the the values. So there and. And here I'm going to set show leading zeros equal to false. And uh, now I'll get my three numbers uh, with leading zeros, and then I'll get my three numbers without leading zeros. So let's run it and see what happens. Okay, leading zeros on the first three, no leading zeros on the last three, which is exactly what I was hoping for. And just remember when you have static variable there is one copy for the class it belongs to the class not an instance uh, we have instances here called n and m and i and uh, if we want to modify something with one of the instances we use m dot or i dot or n dot uh, but if we want to modify a static variable that belongs to the class then it's the class name and then a dot and then uh, whatever the name of the variable is Okay, and we'll stop there and we'll continue with uh, some more things in another video.